Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at square and cube numbers. Okay, now some of these you just need to know and others I'm going to show you how to work out or how to use a calculator to work them out. But the square numbers here are definitely numbers that you should know and need to be aware of when, say, uh, solving equations or different bits and pieces like that. It comes in very, very handy. So what is a square number? Well, a square number just means you times it by itself. So 1 squared would mean 1 times 1, which of course is 1. So 1 is the square number. 2 squared, well, 2 times 2 uh, is 4. So 4 is the square number. 3 squared, 3 times 3, which is 9. So 9 is the square number. And so on and so forth. 4 times 4, 16. Uh, 5 times 5, 25. 6 times 6, 36. 7 times 7, 49. 8 times 8, uh, 64, 9 times 9, 81, 10 uh, times 10, 100. Okay, and these ones here people tend to forget, but 11 times 11 is 121, 12 times 12, 144. Those two are not too bad, but people definitely forget these ones here, which again are handy and you should know. So 13 squared is 169, 14 squared. 196 and 15 squared so 15 times 15 225 now all of these are the square numbers not these these are the square numbers and they're the ones that you need to remember so what's the inverse of a square number or how do we go backwards if I go one square I get one how do I go backwards if I got four squared is 16 how do I go backwards well the inverse is the square root so the square root can be written like this. And then if I square root the square number, it gets back to the original. So the square root of one is one. The square root of four is two. The square root of nine is three. The square root of 16 is four. The square root of 25 is five. And so on and so forth. Okay, so if you square root a square number, it gets back to the original. That's the key thing to remember with this. So I'll just carry on filling this in. Like so. Okay, so if you square a number, so one squared, you get all the square numbers here. And to go backwards, you do the square root. So if you square root the square number, you get back to the original. Okay. Key thing here, if it says in a, in a GCC question, like, what is the sixth square number? Well, it's just six squared. You don't have to write them all out. Just do six squared, because that tends to waste a bit of time in the exam. So that's square numbers. Cube numbers, exactly the same idea, except you times the number by itself three times, hence the power of three. So one times one times one is obviously one. Two times two times two, well two times two is four, times two is eight, not six, which is what lots of people uh, do. Three squared, so three times three times three, 27 and so on and so forth. So 4 cubed, 64, 5 cubed, 125. They tend to be the more common ones that you need to be able to remember. However, I will continue. So 6 squared is 216, 7 squared, 343. Uh, did I say, say, say squared? So I meant cubed. Uh, 8 cubed, 512. 9 cubed, 720, uh, 729. Obviously, 10 cubed would be 10 times 10 times 10, which is 1,000. So again, that's one that you should know along with the first five. Uh, these ones here, I won't worry too much about them, but just uh, to complete this. So 11 cubed is 1,331. 12 cubed, 1,728. 13 cubed... 2,100, uh, sorry, and 97. 14 cubed, 2,744. And the last one, 15 cubed, 3,300. 
and 75. So the first five and definitely the 10 cubed are the ones that you need to be able to use or remember, sorry, I should say. And of course, just like before, if I want the inverse, well, the square root is the inverse of a square number, so the inverse of a cube number is the cube root, written like this. So a little three and then your square root. So the cube root of one is one, the cube root of eight would be two, goes back to the original cube root of 27 is three, and so on. Okay. I'm not going to carry on with that, obviously you get the idea. Now, how do you do that on a calculator? Well, let's pick, oh no, let's pick the 7. So 7, and if you want to square it, we pick the x squared button here, and if you press that, you'll notice you get a little square there. Press that, and you obviously get the 49. So that's the squared button. The square root button is this one here, just to the left of it. So the square root of 49 press that, obviously you get back to 7. Okay, so there's how you use the square numbers on the calculator. Cube numbers on a calculator. Okay, let's pick, I don't know, let's go 8 cubed. So 8, and if you notice, you've got the x cubed button here. Press that, and of course you get the 512. And the cube root, if you look on the square root button, in yellow above it is the cube root button. To get that yellow button, we press shift, because it's in yellow, Press that, and then you can put in your 125, press equals, and it gets you back to 5. So that's where the square and square root buttons are, and the cube and cube root buttons are. So I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking, well, what if it's not a square or a cube? What if it's the power of 4, 5, or 6? Well, let's have a look. Oh, I just forgot to do these questions here. So just a reminder then, so 21, there's the squared button. Press that, and we get 441. 18 cubes, so these are obviously definitely calculator jobs. Cube button is there, so we get 5,832. Now, here we go then. So what happens if the power isn't a squared or a cubed? So five is the number we want to do to the power of six, so I press the five. And you notice this button here, x, and it's got like a little a white square. If you press that, you can then pick whatever power you want. In this case, I want six. So I just press six, and as long as it matches exactly, Press equals and then you get your answer. So one five six two five. Square root, just the normal square root button. So even if it's a number you don't know, just press the square root button which we said earlier. Press the answer and then you get thirty six. Cube root again, just to illustrate again, you press shift and the square root button. So in the little diagram above there in yellow, you get the cube root and then we get back to 25. But what happens if you want to cube root a number, uh, like say for example the seventh root, all you do is above where you had the x and it had the little power, or like the, the, uh, the power of a little white square, again in yellow above it, you'll notice you've got the square root and again like a little yellow square there. So press shift and that one, and then you can pick whatever root you want. In this case I want the seven, and then just press your little arrow to get underneath the actual root if you like, and type in your number, press equals, and in this case it's six. Okay, so that's how you do it with a calculator, and say without the calculator you need to know your square and the cube numbers. Okay, so hopefully that uh, helps with your revision, and definitely something to bear in mind in both calculator and non-calculator. Cheers for watching guys.